So this is a Fosbury flop analogy. If you don't know about the Fosbury flop, there was there's an event called a high jump, where the intent is to jump as high as you can over this bar. Before, people used to jump over the bar where they would land on their feet, right? So they would jump in ways that were kind of perpendicular to the ground because they had to land on their feet. And there were a couple different ways, three major ways that they jumped. And then eventually, they instituted a barrier that you can land on, right? Like a cushion. So this was, this was a, yeah, this was a cushion. And what happened is, now it allowed you to jump different ways. So people were still jumping the old way because that's what they were used to. They were just landing on the cushion, but they were still jumping the old way. The cushion allowed you to jump a different way. So there was this guy named Fosbury who perfected jumping backwards. The Fosbury flop is what they called it. And he was an unknown guy that won the Olympics and then after that he won the gold medal and then after that everybody since has been doing the Fosbury flop. It just makes the most sense. All right, what's good everybody? I got on this hat because it is cold outside, but I wanted to do this analogy. Yesterday I went and saw Sad Guru talk and he talked a lot about life and death and the correlation between the two. And I was going to do a talk before about life and death, but hearing him explain it, and I think there's a language thing as well, I think it makes more sense birth and death. And the reason why I say that, because birth and death are experienced by, let's just call it life, our consciousness. And I know we're just talking words here, but your birth and your death are experienced by this being that sees the whole thing. So it's like your door is open and you're looking at yourself, observe this, and all of your senses are coming in at you right now, but you, the observer, go through this whole experience of birth starting here to death, looking through this one particular door, you know, and you can call that yourself, your ego, or whatever, right? But you're the consciousness looking through this. One way you can prove this to yourself is to um, look at your life now, okay? You aged, you experienced aged, uh, your body aged, but did your consciousness age? Did the being that's experiencing things, did it age? Did it learn? Did it evolve? Did it do all those things? Yes, but did it actually age? Um, so death is just the closing of the door of this limited experience from this observer, right? And this is the back door, so right? So I try to break things down to what makes the most sense. You know, the whole six and nine thing is you're either something physical, just physical, or you're something uh, other than physical, nothing, like no thing, thing being physical, right? Uh, experiencing it, right? You're either this physical stuff, you're either the door, or you're something experiencing the door. And the reason that's important, the materialistic people would just say, well, you're just a door. And that this whole experience, this consciousness, this, this feeling of being, is just generated by elements randomly, right? That's their story. And that's possible. But what about the other end? What is the experience they have looking at it the other way, where you are consciousness experienced the physical, and you're not? Right? If you are that, then birth and, death, birth and death are just something you experience. Now, this is important because this brings a lot of fear in people because there's no coming back from that as far as from the timeline, right? Some people believe once you die, that's it, you know? So it's like you live to be 120. Let's, let's say we did that now, which would be a long time. Uh, 200 years from now, we'll be dead. 200 years ago, we were dead, right? 200 years ago, not that long. Let's make it 200,000 years ago, okay? We were both dead, right? Let's say in the past. Uh, make that 2 million years ago, 200 million, 2 billion. So this little speck of life compared to the time that we were quote unquote dead, it's nothing. This is just a flash that we're in now. So we're in a flash of, of life, if you will, now. And life is just where you basically narrow your focus to who you are now, you know? who you're experiencing this whole thing through. This is just a, a focal point um, that you're looking through this door right now, through this, this time frame. But in the grand scheme of things, you're gonna be dead more than you're gonna be alive, you know? Now, that can be a good thing or bad thing, uh, depending on how you look at it. Because 
if you say you don't come back and there's no way for this consciousness, this experience to open another door, um, then yeah, this is it, you know, and that's what some people believe. Or if you're able to open another door, open another experience within the vastness of time, being consciousness itself, which is, you look at consciousness being something that is experienced in the physical world. And the physical world is the 3D world plus time, which makes it a 4D world, right? And it's consciousness that experiences that. And that consciousness is primal or primary to that, right? So it's, it's below this. So I'll give you another example. And I try not to explain this too high level. Let's say this is water experiencing birth and death, and then it goes back to water. And it, who's to say this water can't experience another birth and death, another birth and death, and that it brings the experiences back because water has memory, right? And this water is this ocean of consciousness, or you can just call it source, if you will. And the whole game is to have people identify with these little bits of the water, these little drops that we call me and you and them, you know, get us to lose this connection that we already have with, with source uh, during this time frame so that, you know, they're, con they're controlled. You, you don't, you don't know who you truly are. And that's, that's what it all boils down to. So that's the back door. And there's a whole much more, there's a whole lot more noise up here um, than there is there, obviously. Uh, this is where the noise is. This is what you can hear. So that is the explanation. This is the Fallsbury flop. This is going backwards. This is going to what makes sense now because we have a cushion. We don't have to have survival consciousness anymore. Um, we didn't have that cushion where you had to hunt and gather and all of this stuff. And now let's say we're going up to consciousness 2.0, which is a more unity consciousness. This is where we're not getting to the me and you and them competition. We're going back to the source. Because to me, we just had this conversation today about racism. I think it's the silliest thing. You can look at all of the science and data you want, and it all points to Africa anyway. So we're all African, if you will. And race for what? During this little, little short time frame, what are you winning for this, this, this race? At the end of the day, we're going to all be more dead than we are alive on this time frame, if you don't believe you're going to come back. So um, make the most out of this time that you're here. And is that beneficial to be fighting another person that's just like you in this in this journey and i wanted to say this real quick as far as um knowledge and everything and um i do talk a lot in these videos maybe not more in real life so people that know me know how i talk and all that stuff and i'm not claiming to be anyone special and i'm only showing you the little bit that i know from a knowledge standpoint i'm only looking out of this one door myself as well and there's all of these other doors. So I know that there's infinitely more that I don't know than I know. So I won't claim to know everything at all. Um, but I have focused intently on disruptive innovation. And this would be the word here. What can shake up this matrix to where it can benefit from all the action that's been taken against it? And uh, this is what I, what I believe will. This will get us back to our connection because this allows us to operate all at a higher level. We're all getting the download of the Fosbury flop and we're all going to be able to jump higher just by changing how we jump. We were never taught this, you know, they never wanted us to find this cushion that was always there because uh, they wanted us to have that fear, that, that death, but that cushion is that you don't die, you know, you experience birth and death and they're connected, but life exists just like nature. Does nature die? No, nature Nature is, and that's part of what you are, part of nature, you know, the source. So the whole unity consciousness looks at the bigger aspects of yourself versus the smaller aspects of yourself. And just look at it as a high frequency you can, you can tune to. There's a consciousness of survival consciousness, or you can tune to one of unity consciousness to where it's right layered on top of each other. The same radio stations are right on top of each other, like the whole new paradigm is right here, right now, to where we can shift to it. And I think we can do it. I know it's a long shot and I'm a dreamer, but you know, this is, this is part of the dream. This is part of why I'm here to, to see, to really push the limit. And this is, this is the limit. You haven't seen this yet. So as a time traveler, you haven't seen this yet. So there isn't even a competition to, to de determine whether this way to flop is, is better. Um, but we'll see when this, when this type of discussion becomes mainstream, 
you'll see, and it will, there will eventually be corporations and companies and everything that will try to piggyback on this stuff. Uh, but if they haven't told you by now, they're probably not going to tell you. So, so be careful of that because you know people are going to make money out of things. But there'll be a culture to where um, compassion and giving back is built into it. You're not going to want to support a company that's just about profit and just taking and taking and taking and not giving. It's got to be some uplifting in it. And if they have the money and they're not making the world a better place, then what are they? What are they really doing? You know, if we're really this and we're just experiencing that, then why not make this experience of birth and death higher, right, for all of us? Um, because we do have the option, being source, to come back. It is possible. Uh, but anyway, this is disruptive behavior because for the people that want to keep the bar low because they, um, for whatever reason, they want to keep the bar low, uh, they don't want you to know this. But they can't stop this information from coming out. This is a shift in consciousness, and this is what it's going to do. And this is just an example using the high jump. Everybody sees that, but they may not know the history behind it. And you can Google it, Fosbury. So just from a, a life, death, and birth standpoint, just look at life as source and its experience in birth and death. Just like war really experienced being shot out of a hole. You know, it goes up and down, but it's still the same source, same consciousness. Whatever word you want to use in languages, it's kind of kind of difficult to explain these things, but this is just to show you that it's that it's possible, and the whole idea is to put this disruptive behavior out in the front, so that people can question this because this again is not something that you're seeing in the mainstream. They're giving you more stuff to keep you focused on things that will continue on the the path that we're on, and you can determine whether you think that is good or bad. For those that want to try to change the timeline to something better then we gotta do something better. We gotta change our actions. And this is something we can all do. All right, I think that's it, y'all. Peace.